Hey guys, welcome back. So I had said in the last video I made that I wanted to do like a part two based off some of the old TikToks that I found um, of Alicia's. What I was doing was looking for some of her old food hauls because she said that during the pandemic there was like no food and they had a scrape to get by. While I was looking, I came across um, some videos that I actually never seen before. So I decided to do um, a video about those videos and, of course, give my opinions on them. Social workers are overworked, they're underappreciated, underpaid, and um, they're, it's just impossible for them to, to do what's asked of them and the massive caseloads that they have. I also have seen, um, and, and this is just my opinion, not fact, uh, a lot of times I think these foster parents that are the abusive, neglectful foster homes, they have a charming, manipula manipulative way about them, and I think that they've learned to fool the caseworkers, unfortunately. Very interesting there at the end, Alicia mentions that foster parents manipulate the system um, and they appear to be these wholesome, honest um, people whose hearts are in the right place. Um, but we know that Alicia uses these children. She and Josh, but more so Alicia, has manipulated the system. Um, she's even said in prior videos that there's a certain limit to foster children you can have in your home. Um, and I believe Alicia, Alicia surpasses that. But it's her being selfish. Alicia likes the idea of having 12 children, right? She likes to be able to say, well, I need seven carts of groceries every week because I have 12 children. I need 35 pieces of beef steak chicken because i have 12 children um she uses that to her advantage and as her excuse and we see where this selfishness uh shines through for instance the septic issue she knows that the septic system they have at that home is not built for a family of 14 but she doesn't you know she doesn't do anything about it um she knows that being a full-time content creator and having 12 children um, takes up a lot of her time and she isn't able to give each child the individual attention they need. And it seems like she's been lacking on even the basic therapies that she claims they need. You know, we don't hear anything about that. So is she contradicting what she said in that previous TikTok? Possibly at the time, not so much, who knows, but definitely, definitely right now. Is make sure uh, for any age of a child that you know what their background is. Um, you do a little research and ask questions. And the biggest thing is make sure that in receiving your answers, that you know you're prepared to handle what the child is bringing to the table because if you're not you will get run over and be very overwhelmed yeah definitely be prepared that they will have a history of trauma especially like in our situation with Bree, she doesn't like men she doesn't want to be around josh the father figure because of her history so be prepared for that that's our situation. Hope that helps. I'm going to say, Alicia, shame on you. Shame on you. You have not once, not twice, a few times now, and this was back in 2020, where you have taken upon yourself to tell the world Bree's history of essay. Who do you think you are? Feeling like you have that right out of all the children in your home this brief situation is the most personal especially for a little girl and you deliberately and continuously state this in your videos this is no one's business brie is good what if one day she looks back and she is hurt internally because 
you decided to share this story without her permission. She's young right now. She thinks it's cute TikTok dances with mom. And yeah, we love that she's she's doing this online stuff. Today, right now, does she know what you've told her followers about her past? Did you sit her down and ask her if it was okay for you to share the story? Because we've heard you say that you've asked one of the twins to share their burn stories. Have you asked Brie? Because I'm going to bet that she's not okay with it. She doesn't know. I bet you anything she would be absolutely freaking mortified if she found out what you've been saying to millions of followers online. I'm glad it's so easy for you and your husband to put a camera up, prop it up, and make a video and expose that little girl the way you guys have. Alicia, I'm going to bet that you've never been in that situation and you have you haven't had let's say a biological child or you know someone very close to you ever go through anything like that you're just sitting back and reaping reward monetary gain money clicks views followers off the back of this little innocent girl who had probably the most traumatic thing happened to her that can happen to any child i'm guessing this is what you meant when you said foster parents manipulate the system those that abuse the children right well did you disclose to any foster agency when you decided to bring the sibling group into your home did you disclose to them that your intentions with brie specifically was that you were going to expose her traumas online to millions of people or did you and josh use your early childhood education degrees or whatnot to manipulate them did you manipulate the system because i'm pretty sure had any adoption agency knew prior your intentions with any of these children in your care you wouldn't have not one child in your care besides your biological so who's manipulating who? Shame on you, Alicia. Shame on you. House tour, the girls' room. This is Bree and Zoe's room. Eventually, Harley will transition into here, but so far when we tried it, she keeps them awake all night partying. So right now, there are two spare beds. And this was the prior master suite. So you decided it would be a good idea to take a video of a bedroom where two little girls in your home sleep. Um, did you ever think that maybe some weirdo might be watching this and planning out a way to maybe get into your house and they'll know exactly where to go where each child may be laying their head down at night did you ever think about that and knowing what unfortunately so many people know about brie you again went against her trust by showing to millions of people her personal space her room I mean, did you ever think that that might make her uncomfortable? Did you ask any of the little girls if they're okay with their bedroom being shown to millions of people online? I mean, again, I have to ask, who's manipulating who? So our last two that we adopted, Brie and Patrick, um, we, they moved in last July, 2019, and we adopted them in November of 2019. They both moved in from a residential treatment facility. That is a facility that takes usually foster children who have suffered a lot of trauma and neglect and need a lot of therapy in order to be successful in a family setting. So they came from a residential treatment facility where they had gone through so much therapy so that they could move in with us and um, they've come a long way in the past year and we're really proud of them and can't wait to see. So I feel in this video that Alicia totally contradicts herself. She's explaining Brie and Patrick, the residential facility that they were living in prior to coming to their home. Um, she stated that they needed a lot, 
a lot of therapy to be able to move into Alicia's home. But she takes them into her home and then she exposes those traumas on her TikTok and her YouTube and her Instagram and probably Facebook. Um, So it's like, how are you helping, Alicia? They want these children to obviously learn how to, you know, move away from the trauma and live these happy, healthy lives. But how can they do that when you're reminding your followers all the shit they went through, like as if these kids are never going to see this content or something like you're making it worse. You're not helping them. You're seriously bringing it up and you're capitalizing off of their traumas. It's disgusting. Again, shame on you. And again, who's manipulating the system here? So the next few videos and slides that I add in here, it just shows the type of content Alicia was making for many years before people started calling her out. Um, Because remember, she has children in her home that have fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, They came from a treatment facility. And this is the type of content that she felt was okay to post she still has it up she still has yet taken it down and the reason is because it gained her many of views so she chose keeping it up versus protecting the children so here you go Okay, so the last clip was a video. And the reason why I posted this specific one, her dancing in the shower, doing God knows what, it's so cringe. But what she's doing is she's replying to a comment. It's actually a compliment um, saying that they love her videos or something. And she replies with like a dancing in the shower, so weird, cringy, awkward mess, right, of a video. Um, But she loves these compliments. And this is why she continues to do what she does because she can have a million people calling her out. But if there's a hundred people still praising her, she for some reason still feels like she's doing a good thing. She for some reason hasn't matured um, as an adult. It's like she's still stuck um, in like a 12 to 16 year old mentality range. Um... So she, she really connects with her younger audience, you know, their children. So when I see like her stance kind of arguing with those that are criticizing Alicia, um, I kind of laugh because it's like, don't engage with these children, right? They're children. They don't understand. Um, and I feel the same way when they come and comment on mine, I just block them from my channel. Cause it's like, for one, you're probably not over 18, So I'm not going to argue with you and you're a child, you know, and they say the same thing over and over. You're so jealous. You're so jealous. No, honey, that's things that children say, right? Like I'm an adult. If you're an adult, let's have a, you know, a um, mature conversation about this, right? So if they don't want to do that, then I just delete them. I don't need them arguing with my followers because you guys are mature and you guys keep it respectful and I appreciate that. A scar, so thank you for asking. We actually don't know how he got it, but when he came into care, the caseworker took him right to the hospital and the burn specialist there said that he suspects that Jason had second and third degree burns all down the side of his body for a month because of how infected they were. He spent eight days at the hospital having um, getting the infection cured up and then he had skin graft surgery on the arm part because it went head, ear, and down his arm. Uh, Here's what he looked like back then. And he has had about two or three surgeries on it by now and he'll need surgeries the rest of his life as he... Okay, in this video, she states that the child wanted or asked her to share his burn story. I don't believe it for one second. This child's really young in this video because it is a couple years old. That's not what's on a little boy's mind is, hey, 
tell your followers, which I don't even know who they are. I don't even understand social media, but tell them about my scars. There again, she's using the kids, her adopted kids, to share their traumas, to gain sympathy and praise. It's disgusting. So I recently had a 14-year-old tell me on one of my posts that she doesn't like how I parent and that I'm a bad mom and that Jason is so deprived because I made him vacuum for two seconds. So here is my rebuttal. Jason came to us at 10 months old. He was malnourished, neglected, and had second and third degree burns down the side of his body. We were the only foster family willing to take both him and his twin brother, who both have special needs, so they did not need to be split up. He is now happy, healthy, and thriving in our family. With our 3,500 square foot home, a trip to Disney World, our own in-ground pool, sensory gym, his own iPad, and Nintendo Switch. So I re Okay, number one, all of her followers are like between the age, like I said, 12 to 16. Um, but I can guarantee nobody said that because I bet if they did, she would post that comment of the person who commented that, right? That she was this horrible mother, even though she is. Um, but that just gave her saying that gave an excuse to um share this story about that child to make her look good to make her look like a savior right to um just remind everybody how bad these children's lives were until she this savior came and saved them it's so disgusting because like i said she's not doing it for the children to help them because she's making it worse She's doing it for herself. And that is where the problem is with her. Question for the crowd. What do you do if you have children that you have adopted and you have open adoptions and they don't want to see their biological parents? Hi, Genevieve. Here is a picture from the visit with our twins biological family today. So I don't know what child's families she's talking about. Um, we know that she has relationships with at least two um, biological families. Um, so if she is talking about either Alex's family or the twins' family, that's pretty disgusting because she has no problem posting the good times, right? The times, the, the scenarios that make her look good. Um, and why she's asking her followers what she should do in a situation like that. You don't know these followers. Why are you asking them for advice? This type of advice. Ask them how to bake a chicken. Ask them how to make creamy mash mashed potatoes. You don't ask them what you should do if your adopted child's having issues with the bio family. Like again, she she's fishing for attention. She's fishing for compliments, and this has been going on since the day she created her social media accounts, and it's a problem. It's a big problem. Thank So that video is a classic example of a narcissist. She doesn't mind exploiting the children, making fun of the children, never talking about herself, her insecurities, um, her past life, her past traumas, if she has any. She doesn't talk about herself. She talks about her children, right? But she doesn't like when someone is bad to her, mean to her criticize her um she hates it and she'll make these videos for herself right she could dish it but she can't take it and that just shows how selfish right she is it's hilarious that she would put on a sad face put a bunch of those little words or whatever the hell they were right um and fish for sympathy 
because people have been calling her out. That video is pretty old. They've been calling her out for a long time. She made a comment recently about how she's like a trending creator and it'll all blow over and then it'll be somebody else. No, honey. No, Alicia. No one's going to stop talking about you, right? Like you are a problem. And people who like to fix problems don't give up that easy. You might, but some of us creators, we don't. I'll say this before I go. Alicia, you are a manipulator. You manipulated the system. You are disgusting and shame on you. All right, that's going to be it for me, guys. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. Bye.